So the reason why change is stressful, even positive change, believe it or not, is yeah. quote unquote yeah, stressful. I agree. Uh, is because of this and the release of adrenaline and, and associated molecules with any time things change. I mean, if you look, the psychologists have worked this out. There's a hierarchy of stressors. Um, and of course, at the at the top of that hierarchy are awful things that we don't, you know, I think at the top, to be honest, I think death of a child is is perhaps the, the greatest stressor. Divorce, death of a loved one, um, these kinds of horrible things yeah. that we wouldn't wish on anyone. Then as one goes down, not too far below, you see things like moving to a new home or apartment. Yeah. You think, well, that could be a great event, right? Yeah. Birth of a new child. And you think, well, wait a second, I thought that's supposed to be one of the greatest joys in life. And indeed it is. But it's stressful to the nervous system because so many things have to be reconfigured, mm -hmm. to say, not to say anything about the lack of sleep with a newborn yeah. and this kind of thing. So change is always going to force our brain to make more assessments of our environment. One of the things that we can say about the brain for sure is that once it learns something, it likes to not have to think about it. When you walk, because you already know how to walk, you don't think right, left, right, left, right, yeah. left. But when you learn how to dance a new step or something of that sort, or a new skill, uh, sports skill, you have to think about it and it's work. One way to deal with change is to simply know this, right? To understand that if one feels stressed or agitated around a new move, or you have a partner who's really stressed about a new move, even though it's exciting, it should be exciting, that that's perfectly normal because what they're experiencing is this increase in agitation and alertness. And it also makes it harder to enter deep, really relaxed states mm. because the brain is in a mode of predictions making predictions, what's happening next, thinking, thinking, thinking. And one of the things that's key to falling asleep each night and replenishing our ability to think and make predictions is the ability to turn off thinking. In order to move through change, designate 20 to 30 minutes each day to put the brain into a state of non-thinking, non-doing, and into a state of quote unquote being and feeling. So not making predictions. Now, the tricky thing is when one is stressed, that's especially hard to do. Yeah. And this is why I think, what is it, Thich Nahan said, you know, what is that, who said, you know, um, when stressed, you know, I meditate every day, but when stressed, meditate twice as long or yes, so, yes, something yes, like yes, that, yes, right? Yeah. When, um, I, when I don't think I have time, like that right. is almost when exactly. I need to make the time. Yeah. It's a skill. And yeah. so this ability to turn off thinking enhances one's ability to enter sleep, which is vital for mental and physical health, obviously, learning, et cetera, for reasons we discussed. So develop the ability to deliberately disengage from thinking and doing, and do that during periods of low stress, mm. right? 20 to 30 minutes a day, even 10 minutes a day of just learning, teaching oneself and practicing the art of turning off prediction is an incredibly valuable skill. Wow. And then the other one is to just understand that we're being bombarded with contextual change all the time. You know, I love Instagram, I teach science on Instagram, I see you there daily. Yeah. Um, and so scrolling on Instagram is an interesting experience because in five minutes, you can look at a thousand different contexts. The human brain has never dealt with that kind of change before. Even when television, when I was growing up, there were three or four good channels, then it went to cable, and then now you get onto an airplane or something, you got 240 channels. Yeah. That's that's a drop in the bucket compared to what we can get in, in a social media feed. Yeah. So I think we just need to be aware that the brain can work with that, but then what you're turning on is an ability to walk into a new context and, and figure out the statistics. Imagine if, if in an Instagram feed, and I'm not demonizing Instagram. I think they're wonderful. I think they provide a wonderful resource, truly. But imagine if we walked out of this room and it was a completely different landscape. It was a jungle. Then we turn the corner and go into what I would think was the kitchen. And it was the kitchen of the some, you know, of what, some Thomas Keller uh, restaurant in New York. Turn the corner and all of a sudden we're underwater. That's social media. Yeah. And we can cope with that. So, that yeah. so if I think about it that way, then I think if we can cope with that, then we can cope with transitions in so-called real life with with ease. Now, some people have more situational awareness than others. They walk into an environment and they're sensing all the things. Other people walk into an environment and they're very good at narrowing their attentional spotlight. I yeah. think we should all know how to do both. Yes. We should learn how to narrow the aperture of our focus, deeply engage, but also deliberately disengage. Yes. And the process of falling asleep that we were talking about before is the practice of learning how to take that attentional spotlight, move those two apart, and then dip, not dim them, but extend the, that same luminosity out more broadly, more broadly, and then 
we're off to sleep. Yes, so, so it's yes. about deliberate control of the nervous system. And unfortunately, we all know how to focus on something if we're very stressed or excited by it. Most people don't learn how to turn off this focus and learn how to deliberately disengage. And one of my great hopes for humanity is that children and adults will learn how to deliberately disengage yeah. because it benefits sleep, which benefits mental and physical health. Mm -hmm.